I use this stack to heal my torn hamstring in seven days. And this is known as the Wolverine stack. It combines two different peptides, BBC157 and TB500. We're gonna make this short and sweet and to the point. We're gonna talk about what it is, what it does, different dosing protocols based off of your needs and who this is for. Because there's some pretty cool stuff that a lot of people are not talking about that are chat GPT experts. So we're gonna jump into what an Olympian coach that also works within the functional and medical space has seen over the last decade of using peptides. So first off the bat is BBC157. BBC157 stands for Body Protective Compound. Now this is a naturally occurring peptide that is produced in the gastrointestinal chamber. And this is pretty cool because once you actually take this orally or inject it, it does some other things systemically that it doesn't just do in the intestines. But we'll start off with one thing that happens in the intestines from BBC157, which is healing intestinal lining. On top of this, it helps to reduce down inflammation. But BPC157 in particular has some pretty cool use cases due to the fact that the major mechanism that we use it for is improving collagen synthesis. We'll get into that a little bit later because this one's really cool in the practical applications that can be done here. The other thing that is great for is tendon and ligament healing. Now, TB500 is a little bit different because this is not naturally occurring in the body. This is a synthetic peptide. It's most known for ability to heal muscle tissue as well as soft tissue. On top of this, it helps cell migration, which is very cool. And again, we'll talk about practical applications here in a second that most people are not talking about. And it improves blood flow and circulation. And it also improves the immune system, which most people are not talking about either. Now, if you clicked on this video, you're probably watching this because you're like, hey, I just want to learn how to take this stuff and to heal my injury, which that's what these are the king for. Traditionally, the Wolverine stack is 500 micrograms of BPC-157 combined with TB-500 at 500 micrograms per day. And many times they're sold in bottles combined together. They could be five milligrams of five milligrams of each. If you guys are having difficulty measuring, I have a video right here that you guys can see how to measure it. But this video, we're talking about what they do and practical applications for your used cases. And a lot of times you don't actually want them to be together in one bottle. And this is the the reason for this is what you are using it for. Now for BBC157, because it's so good with collagen synthesis, if you're having tendon or ligament issues, such as you ruptured something, taking high dosages of it is sometimes extremely beneficial. Not just 500 micrograms, we're talking about milligrams of BPC-157. And from a theoretical standpoint, I would even argue that this may be anabolic at higher dosages from a overall regeneration standpoint and the reduction of inflammation. For injuries, I've seen around one milligram more effective than 500 micrograms of BPC-157. It tends to be pretty linear, all the way up to maybe 2.5 milligrams per day. Now, I personally haven't used protocols up to five milligrams per day. However, I have recovered my hamstring in literally seven days using the combination of the two. And I've also healed a ruptured tendon in my wrist before leveraging high dosages of BP-2157. Don't forget to subscribe, you guys. Another great application of BPC-157 is potentially taking it orally for your gut health. Now, that's not to say that injecting BPC-157 will not repair the gut health. However, I've seen oral BPC-157, even though it's only 50% more bioavailable, better for actually intestinal inflammation and people that have things like IBS or SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Now, TB-500 has some pretty cool applications because you can actually front load with this compound doing extremely high dosages of it rather than just its normal 500 micro and also the half-life of this is much longer, meaning that you can take it every other day or every third day rather than just daily. And the injury protocols that I've used it for was actually starting at five milligrams per day and then I would have reduced down every week by about 50%. So starting at five milligrams, then 2.5 milligrams, then one milligram, and then 500 micrograms for a maintenance dose. And from an injury perspective, I found this extremely beneficial. Now, TB500 is also really cool in the fact that it reduces down something called IL-6 that can drive up autoimmune response. So if someone has autoimmune issues, sometimes taking low dosages of TB500 can actually settle down the overall immune system so that you're not getting as much of an autoimmune response. And it does something else cool, which is reducing down TNF, which is tumor necrosis factor. There are a lot of myths going around saying that it can drive up cancer. We don't have any human research on either BBC-157 or TB500. So TB500 does not cause cancer. This was actually based off of an in vitro study on TB4 driving up cancer growth. Now, TB500 is not identical to TB4, and there has not been evidence showing that it increases cancer growth. In fact, most of these studies are done in rats and not humans. So it's a little bit of a stretch saying that it can drive up 
tumor growth, even though TB4 has been shown in vitro that it can. Now the Wolverine stack and combining the two together, why are these so synergistic? Well, one's extremely good for soft tissue regeneration and anti-inflammatory, so it can help with pain. It can also help with blood flow. In fact, both of these help with the blood flow to areas that need to be repaired. But TB500 is a little bit better actually for muscle recovery and actually repair because of how effective it is for increasing blood flow to the injury. And on practical application, I have seen going close to injuries more effective for the overall repair of that area than just shooting it subcutaneous. From a theoretical standpoint though, you can still go subcutaneous and it will repair it because it's a peptide. The body's gonna do what it's going to do with it. We just have a lot of observational research showing that going close to site does help. If you guys have any further questions around this, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. I try to get back to each and every one, as well as what peptides do you want to see next? So the major use cases that I see for the overall Wolverine stack are going to be people that have things like leaky gut or maybe bacterial overgrowth and they're getting an increase in systemic inflammation. And then the more obvious one is going to be like, if you get injured, you need to get back on the field as fast as possible. And these peptides are a miracle when it comes to that. And I wish that things like this were available when I used to play sports because yeah, most sports are not tested actually. There were some frequently asked questions on the last video that we did on the Wolverine stack and I wanna add some clarification for you. Guys. One of them was on the measurement if the bottle is combined together. If you have five milligrams of TB500 and five milligrams of BPC157, the measurement would still align to the video that I did, which is adding one ml of water into it and then every 10 mark on that insulin syringe is going to be 500 micrograms of each, which is the typical and standard protocol that people are running when it comes to Wolverine stack. And then how long would a five milligram vial last for if you're doing 500 micrograms per day? And the answer there is 10 days. I also got questions about two different bottle sizes, which was 10 milligrams and 15 milligrams, which some compounding pharmacies do make these. If there is 10 milligrams in the bottle, if you add two full syringes worth of water into it, that is two mLs worth, it would make the measurement the same where a 10 mark equals 500 micrograms of BBC157 or TB500. And then there's another compounding pharmacy out there that does make 15 milligram bottles. It's not very common. Most of these bottles are big enough to where you can add three mLs of water, which would make the measurement the same where 10 mark equals 500 micrograms. However, if the bottle cannot handle three mLs of water, I would do 1.5 mLs of water. So that would be one and a half insulin syringes worth. And that would make it that every baby five mark is 500 micrograms, just to make measuring a little bit easier. Should I take the subcutaneous or intramuscular? And to be honest, if it's an injury, I would go as close to site as possible without irritating the area. This could even mean subcutaneous over that area or intramuscular near the area it doesn't make that much of a difference from what I've seen in relative experience. But for ease of comfort, a lot of people are more comfortable doing subcutaneous than intramuscular. Both work though. Plantar fasciitis, where to inject if you're having pain in the heel. Now this one's a little bit weird. I personally would just go subcutaneous near my belly button. It does work systemically and it's a little bit of a weird area. Or you can go close to the ankle, but the issue with going close to the ankle is the water might not disperse fluidly and that's the issue. However, if it was something like tennis elbow, which I have had before and I have used these peptides for, I would actually go into my forearm intramuscular because that was as close as it could get. The other thing is tennis elbow is actually coming usually from tight forearm. So that's how I would apply it for that. If you guys have been finding the peptide series helpful, we have a bunch more content coming your way. So we'll see you guys in the next one.